Hmm, should I get this one or this? This, um. <laughs> Searching for a Pandora box is confusing. Very, very confusing. So, at Team Pandora, we have decided to make a top 10 Pandora box list. If the units can be jailbroke, they will be. This is the definitive list. Join us. Number 10, the Pandora X Games. On this box, games are split between FBA, MAME, and PlayStation 1. Supporting CGA, 15 kilohertz, on the jammer, and also having HDMI and VGA connections, everyone should be accounted for. The key feature of this board is its extremely snappy menu. It's all in alphabetical order. Games on the whole perform rather well, for example Tekken on PlayStation, but there are still a few slow titles, like OutRun on MAME. Now for the cons! No save states, no PlayStation 1 memory card, or correct controls. At only $37, the price is rather attractive compared to the more expensive alternatives. At number 9, the Pandora Box DX. This game's list is split between FBA, MAME, PlayStation 1, SNES, NES, Mega Drive. You can also add your own, without video snaps or pretty title. This supports CGA 15kHz on the jammer, with both HDMI and VGA, up to 720p, with also 4-3 aspect ratio. The menu has a nice search and category system, so you can find all the 3-4 to four player games rather quickly. Games on the DX run rather well. One thing to mention is that the DX and the CX are the only boards that support MAME samples out the box. Save states are a thing, and even saving loading for the PlayStation 1. Cons! Screen tearing! Even though the games run at a decent speed, the output is jerky. Menu automatically goes through each game with a loud, irritating noise. And the look is a bit Marmite. At $65, I can only recommend this if you need that jammer video output. Speeple 2 on a cabinet? Awesome! Pandora's Box 6! This is the yin for the yang. DX's Dark Twin. A sleek, quick menu with indexing mode. It only supports FBA, MAME, and PS1. Save load isn't a thing, but what is a thing is a community support. If you have either the 6 or the DX, you should go bookmark Zero J's blog and join his Discord now. He does some great work for the community, and his write-ups are top tier. Amazing stuff. Thanks, Jay. Number 8. Pandora Box CX. Same as the DX. The half the price. $32? Number 7. Pandora's Box 9H. The list has FBA, MAME, PlayStation 1, SNES, NES, Mega Drive, Master System, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, PSP, Dreamcast? There are a few ways of adding your own titles. You can use the Wi Fi store, but we could also add our own games using Pandori. Video output via VGA or HDMI, and only in 16.9. Well, it's stretch pants. In the main menu, we can search and switch between the system types. Most SOC games run pretty well. And we can also add FBA configs to boost the CPU core. Mmm, speedy speedy. Cons! The menu has a little slowdown. No support for save state on N64. Also, any saves for the PS1. Oh, one more thing. PlayStation, PSP, the controls are a bit messed up. But I mean, $37? That's a bargain! So I recommend this if you have a 4.3 display, or you've got one of them little HDMI changer boxes to change the aspect ratio. You could just really like widescreen. 10 videos a day Sometimes get to see Gameplay and lose another life 
but that's fine. Mark Edwards! One more to mention is the Pandora Saga 14. A little faster than the 9H, but you can't get any video output from the Jammer Edge, so you need to use the VGA or HDMI. 6. 3D Pandora Saga TV Game Box. Games list has FBA, MAME, PlayStation 1, SNES, NES, Mega Drive, pretty much same as the 9H. But from stock, it has multiple PSP and Dreamcast games. Yay! You can also add games via the Wi Fi store, USB stick, or Pandori. Video output HDMI. We can use the jailbreak to add 4.3 aspect ratio. This board shares a lot with the 9H, but as this board uses a faster chipset, the 812, it's a little snappier. Stock games run well, save states available, and FBA configurations, we can uh, switch to boost the CPU core. Post jailbreak, Dreamcast memories work too, and we can use Android, RetroArch. This ultimately gives us access to a PlayStation 1 emulator with saves, Amiga, FB Neo, and a wealth of possibilities. Cons? Controller support sucks. If you want to use a stock menu with all the emulators working, then you need to use the fake PS3 pads that come with the box. You can use a zero latency encoder, but it won't work for PSP, N64, or PlayStation 1. Because we don't have any pins on the board, we need to use a USB stick to load up Android or RetroArch. This box would be amazing if it had them pins. 5. Pandora Treasure 2 Often overlooked, this board has the new generation of software on the 912 boards. Games list includes FBA, MAME, PlayStation 1, PSP, and updated versions of the N64, Dreamcast, and Nomi emulators. You can add your own games using microSD or a USB stick. Video output is HDMI or VGA in 1080p. Menu has a search and you can filter per game genre. There's also three different scanline effects. You can enable, disable HD smoothing. Oh, and get this, configure controls for each system. This is the first machine on the list that has correct PlayStation 1 or PSP controls in the stock menu. FBA main games run very well with very little control the latency, so it's great for shooters. On certain emulators, you can even use the back options button to bring up arcade dip switches. As this is a 912 system, providing our board has a root switch, we can actually load up Emuelec. So 4-3 aspects, more systems and settings are available. We even got light gun and steering wheel working. Amazing! So the cons. There is some form of frame skip on the PSP and N64 and Dreamcast games chug. The GPU is just it's not as quick as the 812 systems. No aspect ratio switch on the stock menu could be a deal breaker. And we also need to use the harness on board to get back to the main menu. Not the best if you only want to use it as a TV box. Now my support from the stock menu is a first and something we hope to see much more of in the future in a faster board. If you want a machine with low latency for shooters, this Six may be the board for you. Four, Pandora's Key 7. Now this 912 machine is showing its age, and it can be now very difficult to find the red and green boards. It shares many things with the Treasure 2, games list included, with older Naomi and N64 emulators. Video output is HDMI or VGA in 1080p. The menu can look quite nice, but with no search function or logical game order, it can be a mess to find a game you want to play. Games run well, with extremely low controller latency. At stock, every game on the system runs widescreen with a smoothing filter. You cannot change this on the menu, but using Pandori, we can turn off the smoothing filter for most games and apply aspect ratio 4.3 to everything. From the stock menu, we've got some of the nicest looking pixels and some of the smoothest moving games. Playing Neo Geo on this is Beautiful. Like the Treasure 2, we can install Emuelic, have more emulators, 
You can also play a bit with light guns and steering wheels. Yeah. Cons. PSP, N64, Dreamcast games run kind of slow. Seems the 812 boards are a bit quicker. Could be a few adult games in here, so you might want to hide these from your kids. If you search for Key 7 on Ali, you'll find many blackboard Key 7s, which if you check the little numbers, they'll say 812, which are not this board. The number you're looking for is 912, and usually they're red or green. If you try and find these, they may be a bit pricey now, and very rare, especially new. Three, Pandora Games 3D Plus. The Plus comes with the system on the board and with games separately installed onto the micro SD. Much like the Saga TV box, it has the 812, the fastest running Pandora box chip of 2020 and a fairly robust menu. On the games list, we have the same systems as the TV box. More games can be added by Wi-Fi store, USB stick, or we could add to the menu with Pandori. Video, HDMI, VGA at 720p. You want aspect ratio, 4-3 switch? Jailbreak can do that. Compared to the original PG3D, we have more configurations for the controllers. We have more controller compatibility and one more MAME emulator. But it seems overall a tad slower. The 812 boards can run some PSP games at two-player, Tekken 6 and a few more. We have some pins on the board so we can use some Pandora shortcuts to load up RetroArch, Aspect Switch and Android. To speed it up from stock we can downgrade it to the earlier PG3D firmware and we can also jailbreak for some additional speed. Two, Pandora Games 3D. The board that started it all. Same as the last board, but backwards. It's stark, it's quick, but there's not much space to install anything else to the onboard memory. Upgrading to our custom PG3D Plus firmware, we can fix this. To give all the benefits of the Plus while keeping the pep of the older PG3D. At number one. He Yoga Lee indeed! Take everything that was good about the last board, and then plus alpha. With no onboard NAND, everything is on the micro SD. So it's difficult to brick, but you'll be limited to the stock 64 gig of space. Unless that is, you use a USB stick to create an external menu. But considering we can use the jailbreak, like earlier, Larger games can be thrown onto an external thumbstick and ran in RetroArch, while the core FBA main PSP games can be left as is. This box has next to no controller latency, and also no controller compatibility. But you know what we can do? We can cross-flash it to a PG3D. If you're after the fastest Pandora board available, this saga is the one to get. Matt, Potato King, you win. So I hope you guys enjoyed that top 10. Please like and subscribe and comment your thoughts down below. If you want to buy one of these, referral links are down below. That helps the channel a load. Catch you on the flippity flip.